Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. Owlcat recently announced that 15 new subclasses will come with the Lord of Nothing DLC released on November 21st. Obviously, the massive variety in classes is a big draw for the game, so this is welcome news for fans. The specific mechanics haven't been released, but they provided a blurb for each one that describes what it will do, and in this video, I'll give my thoughts on each option. Let me know down in the comments which subclasses appeal to you the most. Let me remind everyone that this channel focuses on builds, guides, and live streams for CRPGs. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see future content. The first subclass announces Prophet of Pestilence, and it's under the Shaman class. This is a character who has bound their soul to Apollyon, who was one of the horsemen of the apocalypse. This is super cool to me, because while I have read about the horsemen in Pathfinder lore, they don't factor into the game very much, so it's really interesting that Alcat went this route. This subclass gets a unique customizable hex that is further enhanced when the enemy attacks or comes too close. It also gets new spells, including one that summons insects that infect and devour living creatures. Unquestionably, this is meant for a swarm playthrough, and I am all for it. I know the recent DLC that added a party member also provides some new swarm content, so I might have to take another crack at that mythic path when I play through the game again. Next up, we have Tortured Crusader, and it's under the Paladin class. This one is all about being an incredible tank who gets extra feats, can smite all enemies regardless of alignment, and gets more powerful when your party members go down. This all sounds good, but I absolutely love base paladin, so it'll be interesting to see what you lose in order to gain these tanking abilities. Moving on, we have Separatist, which is under the Cleric class. The subclass allows you to take a domain that your deity doesn't have in exchange for weakening the abilities of that domain. The devs put in a ton of effort to make this work within the game, including adding two new subdomains, Ice and Undead, while also modifying more than 70 different abilities. Every time I play a Cleric, I want Ioma Day for my deity, but I want Guarded Hearth from Iristil, and it feels like a tug of war. Really curious to see how much that power is weakened if I take it using this subclass. Next on the list is Winter Child under the Druid class. This subclass allows you to bond with a blizzard elemental that protects you. As you level up, the elemental gets more powerful and it will be more effective at debuffing enemies while debuffing your allies. The blizzard looks awesome, but I wonder if its size will get annoying to deal with similar to the Triceratops. Looks to me like it's taking up a similar amount of squares, not to mention how the height factor will be dealt with. I have to play around with it before I can really get excited. It is worth noting that the Lord of Nothing DLC will be heavily focused in an ice realm, which I can only assume means a lot of the enemies there will be resistant to ice damage. If this DLC is consistent with the prequel, you won't get high levels or mythic options that let you bypass elemental resistances. Coming up next, we have Ghost Rider under the Cavalier class. This subclass allows you to use a phantom horse, which makes your mount significantly more durable than what other classes have access to. It will also ignore rough terrain. This looks like a sure lock for an incredible Death Knight build, but again, the question becomes, what do you lose? I'll definitely be paying close attention to this one. Finally, we have come to the subclass I know many, many, many of you have been waiting for, Wear Touched, under the Shifter class. Owlcat's version is changed from the tabletop and it has three different forms that each have unique abilities and different playstyles. Absolutely, I plan to play this archetype. Spending an entire game as a werewolf sounds like a ball. I never got to finish a demon playthrough the way I wanted to, so this class might be a great way to revisit that content. Coming up next, we have Shadowcaster, which is under the Wizard class. This subclass allows you to wield illusions and shadow, while also providing the ability to turn into a shadow form that gives you bonuses without taking away your spellcasting ability. I know this sounds sacrilege, but for the most part, turning into other creatures like dragons, elementals, or shadows has never appealed to me. Werewolves are great, but otherwise, I just want to be my character, so this doesn't interest me very much. Next comes another subclass I am interested in, Hag of Garona, which is under the Witch class. Those of you who watch my video ranking all the classes know how disappointing I found Hag bound to be. Alcat has taken another crack at it with an option that lets you summon your Hag as a companion who can use mid-level spells an unlimited number of times. This doesn't sound all that mechanically impressive considering what many of the other classes do, including Stigmatized Witch. Still, it is at least interesting, so it's cool to see this added into the game. 
Keeping things moving, we have Tandem Executioner, which is under the Hunter class. This subclass loses all spellcasting ability, but it gets access to special battle tactics, which I assume are team feats that no other archetype has access to. Also, I could be wrong, but I swear the color palette on the Triceratops is one we couldn't use before. I am a big fan of pets in this game, so the more classes that use them, the merrier, but it's hard to know if this option is really viable without seeing the full details. Next up we have Geomancer, which is under the Sorcerer class. This subclass allows you to harm yourself in order to increase the damage or healing capabilities of your spells based on the terrain. My question becomes, is this based on the terrain you are standing in, or can you pick which terrain you want to use every time? If it's based on where you are standing, I probably won't play this, because it'll feel weaker based on what type of location I am in. Moving right along, we have Dual Cursed Oracle under the Oracle class. This subclass takes on two curses, but also gains the ability to change enemy crits into critical failures while doing the opposite for allies. Forcing an ally to critically hit is pretty freaking awesome, and this archetype definitely sounds interesting to me. Next on the list we have Reanimation under the Alchemist class. This subclass lets you raise corpses who get a bonus to their stats as well as their attacks. Alcat specifically mentions it's a perfect option for Lich. The next time I do a full playthrough of Wrath of the Righteous will probably be my last time, and I'm giving serious consideration to ending where it all started. This sounds like a great option and may be where the Pathfinder era of my chapter comes to a close. Getting into the last three announced subclasses, we have Hag Riven under the Blood Rager class. This archetype will give you access to magic claws that grow to have the properties of magical weapons. The mechanics could be incredible, but based just on the description, this class is boring and I probably won't play it. Next up we have Dark Lurker under the Rogue class. This subclass allows you to stealth in shadow, gain bonuses to attack when using an enemy shadow, and you can eventually gain Blind Sight, which is a massive boon in any game. Alcat mentions that the game doesn't have a light shadow mechanic, so they've added something to make this class work, but I still don't really get it. If it's as simple as when your character is stealth you get attack bonuses, this might be really nice. If it's a situation where you must be facing a large creature and be close enough to be in a shadow for your abilities to really pop, then the usefulness of this archetype goes down significantly. Last, but certainly not least, we have Flesh Eater under the Barbarian class. This subclass allows you to devour the flesh of your enemies, gaining special abilities based on what type of creature the victim was. While enraged, you take greater penalties, but can also gain attack and damage against supernatural creatures if you haven't recently fed on them. Not my thing, but still sounds like another good swarm option. That finally wraps up the full list of subclasses Alcat has announced will be released with the Lord of Nothing DLC. I am looking forward to hearing which new options excite all of you. Again, the DLC will be available November 21st. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. Take care!